Hi, I'm Chip Foose. We're here at Foose Design, and today we're going to talk about the 32 Ford. You know, I get asked all the time, why is the 32 Ford so iconic? You know, what's the reason that everybody wants a 32? Well, that's like asking, why do men like women? This is a 32 Ford. You know, I think Ford was in production for 19 years with the Model T and the Model A before they switched and started building the, the Model B, which was a 32. The 32 was the first year of the V8 engine. So now we got horsepower. And you know, after the war, all these veterans were coming back to America. And this is when the dry lake racing was really popular. You could get a Model A or a Model T, but if you got a Model B with a V8 engine, you were that much further ahead. And it's interesting to me that the, the 32 is the only year that the frame was part of the body design. You actually saw above the, above the running boards and below the doors, you could see a piece of that frame. And the frame was actually shaped because it was a part of the body. You, these veterans would come back, they'd buy one of these cars, they'd start pulling the fenders off, all the pieces. So the Roadster was the one that they wanted because the reason they're pulling all these parts off is they're trying to make them lighter. Then they could start putting you know, the high performance parts onto that V8 engine and go out and try and break some records on the salt flat or the dry lakes. It's just classic, timeless design. It's simple, it's elegant. It's not about oversighting, it's Form follows function. And, you know, 33, they started laying things back and styling started being a part of it. I think the 32 is a real honest design. You know, I'll show you what I'm talking about on the, on the frame. Most frames are a simple C-shaped design. The 32 actually came down. It had a little bit of a roll to it. And then it had a body bead like this. The running board bolted to the bottom of the frame came down and the body was up here and the door came out from there. So you had this one section that was exposed and through the length of that, the rocker, here's the door was, was through here. This kicked up into the rear and that roll right there actually right at the front of the cowl rolled here and came down, came back and rolled up. So when the fender came down, and then you had the running board, the fender came down, the running board bolted right here. When the running board ended, then right where the body, the frame would turn, this section rolled up, but the fender was actually bolted to the bottom and then switched, came across and was bolted to the top of the frame. And no other production car ever in history has had the frame as part of the design. Now you look at performance motorcycles today, they use the frame as part of the design. And that's, that's where it is to me is it's, form following function, but it's a real beautiful element that none of the other cars have. If you pull the running boards or the side skirts off a of Model T or Model A, you saw just a C-section frame. It wasn't something that was elegant. The 32 has a real beautiful frame underneath it. But the other thing that I thought was gorgeous was the grill itself. Just had a beautiful, slightly wider at the bottom shaped grill a little bit of a peak at the top came down of course you had the hole for the crank and then all the vertical bars but it was just a beautiful timeless design grill that came around and it was just a beautiful pure shape that again the next year they started laying it back but this is honest form followed function and you know it's amazing to me that ford produced 14 different body designs in 1932 a single year car. You know, 33 and 34 was the same body. They used it again and again. Then 35, they started building a different body, which actually ran 35, 36, and 37 were very similar with subtle changes. But uh, the 32, one year only, 14 different bodies. A car company couldn't do that today. A lot of people say that the 32 Ford is very boxy looking. But when you look at the shapes, it's not boxy to me. It's elegant, it's pure, it's got beautiful radiuses. You know, if you look at just the, the side view of just the body coming through, beautiful little elegant design work in the reveals on the car. Door came down, this would come down, it rolled up with the back. Draw on a roadster here but really simple, elegant, 
What I loved on the 32 Roadster, which you didn't have on any of the other bodies, is the rear quarter, the wheel lip, the molding that came up around the fender, it actually had a beautiful little scallop in there that gets a gorgeous reflection when you look at it. Now all the sedans and all the other bodies, they were flat with just a simple little flat reveal that went around it. Only the Roadster had a beautiful rolled out body. I've always thought it'd be cool to cut the Roadster piece out, which you don't have to do now because you can order a quarter from Brookville. You could take that section and weld it into a sedan or, or a two door coupe, uh, whatever you want to use, but you could use that piece. But the body is just a simple, elegant, it's rectangular, but it also tapers where it needs to. It's a beautiful form. Now, when you got the fenders in there, like I was talking about that little roll that came out underneath the frame there, rolled around in the back, you had your fenders, you had the running board, and then the front fender came up, and the front axle was just behind the radiator shell, right in here, so your wheels, right in there, so your, your grill came out right above, or right in line with the front wheel, and you had the rear one back there. But it was just a, a beautiful shape, timeless, elegant. It hasn't dated. It's interesting to me that some people question whether the desirability for the 32 was for the mechanicals or the design. I think it's a mixture of both, but when the V8 engine came out in that car, it was so much easier because you could get a used 32 so cheap back then. And if it already had the V8 engine, now you're just pulling the parts off, making it lightweight and putting performance products on it. So you can go out and have some fun on the weekends and, and try and set some records or take it out on the street or just build a really cool street car. But it already had all the performance parts in there. So when you're asking whether it was because of the aesthetics or the mechanicals, I think it was a bit of both. It was a beautiful car that worked great. You know, it's interesting, the proportions of these cars, when you look at a Roadster, and I'm just gonna do a quick little sketch here. You look at a, a 32 Ford Roadster, It's got a little tiny short door on it. And when you look at that, I'm gonna pull this around. The doors always look really stubby to me. Now the three window has a real long door, but the five window seems to have just the perfect proportion. I'll do a sketch of a three window next to it. And I'm drawing these without without fenders on it, so you see what I'm talking about. The three window had a rolled door in the front, came back, had, it had a beautiful proportion. The cuts that always seem tall to me, that makes sense. Well, of course I've drawn it, chopped, but when you saw the three window, the door was much longer than the, than the Roadster. Now the five window. And when you look at the three basic 32 Fords, you got a Roadster, you got a three window, and you got a five window coupe. The Roadster has a real stubby door compared to the other two. The three window has a real long door and the five window coupe to me has the perfect proportion door. Now, when you look at the Roadster, the rear quarter looks real long compared to the door itself. And when you open the door, it seems like you have to get around the corner to get into the seat. I don't know why they had such a short door on it. I'm building one right now for my wife, but I'm pulling the door back two inches, cutting that two inches off of the quarter and extending the door so that it looks proportionally correct. To me, it always looked like it was real short. I love the three window, but it's a real long door. To me, the five window with the little window behind the door, it just all works.
You know, on 32, here's a Roadster. You always had the louvers in the hood. It was interesting because Ford actually made two different hood sides. They made a 20 louver hood, which was back east, and they made a 25 louver hood, which was a west coast car, so they could get more air out of it because everybody knows those flatheads wanted to overheat. Now, the hot rodders all want the 25 louver. They just look cool on the car. Now, also, you can get a new, it's a new production hood side that still has a 25 louver, but they're actually stamped and opened up a little more so you can get some of that air out. I actually use those on my five window coupe, but use them on a lot of cars. They're, they're just cool. You always know the little, the little tiny ones, the 20 louver, because back east where it was cold, they were trying to keep that heat in. I'm gonna draw another. You know, typically 32 Fords were that rectangular boxy shape. And I remember when I first went to work for Boyd, in 1990, and I said to Boyd, let me do some drawings. I wanna show you something that I think would be really cool. Typically, customs that were sectioned or chopped and lowered and right on the ground, customs like that were Mercury's or big bodied cars. The 32 was typically just a hot rod, and I took the approach of, let's do what's being done to Mercs and the big body cars and approach that with a 32. And I actually did a little slight wedge section, pulled the rear wheel lip up, and that was the first car that we did called the Boydster. Soon after that, there were many uh, fiberglass bodied uh, manufacturers that were doing copies of that car and also doing it in the 34s and 33s. But uh, you could buy those all over the place and they were just scattered at all the rod runs. But you know, the first one was the Boydster and I'll do a little sketch here of what I had done. So you can see, typically a 32, was this way, had the short door and the body. So this would have been the typical proportion of, of what a 32 would be. Now what I wanted to do was lift the wheel well up, but rather than doing that on this sketch, I'm gonna bring the body down. So I pulled the body way down and wedged it just slightly Built a longer frame. We actually stretched the car out a little bit, but uh, for this proportion, I'm just gonna show you from where it was to where it is. So this dark section above This dark section is showing you where a typical 32 would be. And there is where we took it down to. So that was the first one that was done that way called the Boydster. Then we did the Boydster 2, which was full fendered. Then we did a 34 that was that way. And from there, it just went on and on and on. And uh, when people say that everything's been done to the 32, you hear it all the time. That's not true. I've got some other ideas of things that I want to build. I'm actually collecting the parts for a car that I want to build, stretching it out and making it look more like a uh, classic era, uh, almost a brass era car, but much longer. Instead of a stock 106 inch wheelbase, I'm building one that's gonna be a 134 inch wheelbase and it's gonna look much like a Duesenberg. So the question in the beginning was, why is the 32 Ford the quintessential hot rod? Well, we've been playing with it for 80 years and we haven't come up with all the things that we can do with it. You can hot rod it, you can restore it, you can customize it, it's endless. I have ideas that I haven't seen yet. I know other people have ideas. So it's whatever you want to do. You get to personalize it and make it your own car.